Okay, Storytelling Ron, I'm here with Anthony. We don't know each other at all. <laughs> Not I mean, at all. You, I guess you contacted me on because I'm doing that little silly little Kickstarter. And I yeah. appreciate you just, just you know, yeah, con, uh, contacting me about my ideas and then your ideas. And I kind of got intrigued. Um, so we'll start with that. So I, yeah, I am a... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go hyperbole here. I I still like, I don't want to do angels and demons, you know, like as right, a right. role playing game or whatever. Yeah. That was my yeah. whole idea. I wanted, you know, to, 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 to do the us on the ground. I wanted right. to explore that because I don't know anything about that. I really didn't when I was figuring out my role playing game and all that. Sure. I'm trying to figure it all out. But, uh, and I've always seen sort of the Christian iconography of, of iconography or whatever of angels and demons when, whenever sure. I see kind of fantasy, Christian fantasy. Right. And so that's kind of where I was like, ah, I want to try to do the, you know, the guys on the boots on the ground getting, getting right. messed up. But so when you brought up yours and I, I don't know, for some reason I, I wasn't turned off. I was turned on by, by the little bit you said. And I was, yeah. so I wanted to hear more about it. So, so now here we are. Um, well, so. I, I definitely want to, yeah, I was going to say, I want to comment at some point, uh, make sure we don't miss uh, talking about different ways of actually incorporating your, you know, looking at, evaluating, exploring faith within the role-playing game, because mm -hmm. I think there's a couple very valid things going on there. And I'm actually, a little spoiler, I'm about to release a video on my own thing, hopefully today, and it deals with, um, it in the video, it briefly touches on um how some other faith-based rpg uh you know rpgs handle some things and you do it differently so yeah. it's something that kind of excited me and i wanted to explore yeah yeah so you have a you i didn't even know you had a youtube channel do you have a youtube channel yeah so it's it's it's, it's budding i have like okay. game tutorials on there right now and yeah. i'm making uh, a series called insights that just kind of give you know just cool. like what you do yeah my, yeah. my, my i have a two, youtube more channel more. but it I would describe it as floundering <laughs> as opposed to no, but, um, I get it. No, you seem to be fine. Yeah. I mean, I see that, you know, you have a whole different, I, I, I browse through, you seem to have like uh, quite a few followers still. And um, you know, some of your campaigns have quite a few views. I know that the, for the Lord one's a little new. So. Yeah. I'm sort of like switching bait, you know, like that's kind of, that's what the argument now in the, in the culture wars is you're doing a switch and bait on us with, you know, the, yeah, all right. the DC and Marvel and Disney. So right, that's a whole right. other, yeah. So that, and that too is why I, 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 you know, in Dungeons and Dragons, that's too why I, I was like, I, I, can't, I can't do this anymore or I don't want to do it anymore. Or the, the Holy Spirit is making me not do it anymore. But I was relieved. Yeah. I was relieved that I could get away from D&D &D 5e cause, or D&D okay. just in general. Yeah. Cause I didn't want to, you know, I didn't, I, I, I love D&D. &D. I, I love Marvel. I love Star Wars. I love yeah. uh, all that Disney and, yeah. and, and the Mandalorian. I didn't want to give that up. Um, But the Holy Spirit is sort of, allowed me to hey you don't have to you can you can move on you can do other stuff it's fine <laughs> and so that's what i yeah that's where i'm at with that and how or the no, last six months my, or whatever my i was gonna say my uh subscription expires in april so yeah, we've got a few months left to watch a few more things <laughs> well, I, I canceled disney plus but then um they wanted to watch the, the family wanted to watch some football the disney and i'm not football football and nfl or the super bowl and then I saw in the Disney and Hulu and, and gotcha. you know, you're, yeah. or in Fox Sports, blah, blah, blah. So so we did it. Yeah. And now that's over. I'm going to like, you know, of course, Mandalorian season three is coming up. I know. Right? So I want to I want to <laughs> see if, you know, I want to hold on and see what they're doing. But that's probably sure. going to be a deciding factor for me. Although yeah. I, I could take it or leave it. I could I could end it. If, you know, it's not a big right. Anyway, that's yeah, it's sad, but uh, maybe it's true. The truth. Maybe we do need to start. I don't know getting separated. I don't know. You know, well, well I was going to say, actually, you know, here's what I found. Um, since we're talking about, again, faith and games and all that, uh, th for me, I've dedicated so much since I act, once I actually started producing this game, instead of just having it as a casual thing I do in the background. Uh -huh. Um, th so Allies of Majesty has been around for, uh, or in existence for like more than 22 years. Say it again. Uh, I used, what's that? that what's the title? Uh, allies of majesty allies of majesty of the, that's the, your yeah that's mine okay. yeah and so um i've had it you know for playable for over 22 years wow uh and it's been it's like fifth edition it's drastically different now than it was in its origins but your um, own fifth edition 
<laughs> yeah, my own. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a joke I had around that time where it's like, you know, I'm in my own 5e. <laughs> but um, no, it really, it, it, um, where was I going to go with that? There was something that, that you said that triggered that. Um, uh, yes. Or... So I'm, I'm spending a lot more time now that I'm actually producing it. I'm spending a lot more time, um, like, you know, just, just focused on the production. Like that's pretty much other than my career and my family, that's all I'm doing is <laughs> every spare minute I have, you know, and instead of like having regular times where I'm playing video games or some other things, yeah. None of that. I'm not, I'm really not doing much of any of that. And so, um, and so it's, but, but to build the game world and do a lot of the lore, I'm actually studying a whole lot of ancient Near Eastern stuff, like biblical stuff, you right. know, and I'm studying a whole lot of just scholars on the stuff and just really digging into especially Old Testament stuff, like the New Testament too, but we, we know the New Testament a lot better than most of us know the Old Testament, you know? And so I'm learning a lot about the Old Testament and kind of increasing that, balancing it out a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, but, but it changes your mindset when you're spending that much time. And then when I'm now like jumping in and watching, um, like I, I try to learn some stuff from Critical Role because Matt's, Matt's a great DM, you know, as far as that goes. I mean, I just watched it to see. I don't watch it like a lot of people do. I've watched maybe like, you know, maybe 20 episodes total, you know, uh, total. And then I just checked out the Vox Mach in a cartoon and I'm like, it's entertaining, but like I'm a lot more sensitive because I've been spending so much time removed from media, stepping back in the crudeness and just the, you know, uncaring swearing, meaning like we'll just talk it, about so. sexual things and and swear to no end. <clears throat> and everything's, you know, everything's, you know, something censored, like a comment is, is I mean, even the cleric has to, you know, not that they're well, oh, I haven't even watched it, so I don't even know. Yeah. So my point being, though, I'm a little more sensitive to that. And it's like, you know, I, I really could entertain this if it were <laughs> or, you know, I could be entertained by this if it were a little more like, you know, it's kind of feel like it's over the top. So and it's, um, and I it's, think stepping away might help, you know, like your your perspective. It kind of changes things. Yeah. And, and they're I mean, they're making shows that are adult and perverse, but they're using kid medium. And that's yes. um, and there's yeah. no one no one telling them, hey this is wrong and it is wrong. Right. Um, right. you know, that's, they're coming out with now. I just, you know, I think I saw a Super Bowl commercial. They're coming out with a like, uh, animal talking animals and it's, a, it's an adult movie, but it's talking animals. What, what is your problem? You know? <laughs> I, I, was, I think, no, okay. anyway, we, gonna, this, is not, this is not where we're supposed to get yeah. controversial in yeah. stating this. I'll just ask a question because I don't know the answer. I'm not saying I know the answer is I wonder if uh, there's a little bit of nostalgia, of course, um, but but n being a nerd is a lot more acceptable now than it was. And so being able to um, and I hate to put it in biblical terms, but I love to um, cling to childish things, you know, is is a lot more accepted now. There's not this uh, people, the generation above you telling you, you need to grow up and take these responsibilities and do these things being leisurely and playful and childlike is a lot more accepted now and so then entertainment responding to what everybody wants is going to go into that medium they're going to go into you know uh they're going to definitely capitalize on that you know just like sex sells if 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 nostalgic and childlike sells then we're going to go into that too you yeah, know? unfortunately they're putting those two together and that's that's the the point where we're I, like, I know yes uh, uh, yes wrong or, yeah. so Anyway, that's not what our subject's about. <laughs> no, it's not. That's, that's why I said I knew we were going to get off on uh, yeah. controversial there, but you know, wow. that's what the edit button's for. No, no. <laughs> so, <laughs> I what you just said there. I love what I'm doing, like the um, putting the my faith into role playing games and and spending all my time doing this. Absolutely. Like, yeah, yeah. I I can't yeah. play like I guess Elden Ring or any like any whatever new computer games out. I like I don't want to do that because I'm gonna waste. It's a time sink. Exactly. Uh, I exactly have what I was so saying. Yeah. I have so much yeah. joy in just constantly tinkering with, you know, the, the for the Lord, and it's yeah. for the. And of course, my problem is it's for the Lord Dark Ages, for the yeah. Lord Post Apocalyptic, and for the Lord Christians in space. <laughs> yeah, I know. I saw. So, I, I heard you say those things. Oh, like yeah. Apostles of the Apocalypse. That's what I wrote. That's the title of the of, okay. the, of the Apocalypse one. But it's the same okay. rules light set, uh, system, so you can have the same character. You know. 
time travel or whatever. But it's you know timeline, but whatever. <laughs> it's so funny. Yeah, We're doing similar rules. things, but in way different spectrums. And, yeah, that's hilarious. and I really like that because when I first was starting this a few months ago, I only knew of two Christian role playing games, like the Holy Lands one, yeah. which I hope you know is 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 becomes more successful too. And then um just the Dragon Raid or Light Raid, Dragon or Raid, the one that got the, the one that got shut down by the Satanic Panic. <laughs> and it had you had to memorize Bible verses or something like that. I don't yes. remember. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't have it, so I don't know. But um I never played it either. But yeah. that's yeah, yeah. And then when I scoured YouTube and Twitter, I couldn't find any Christian rpg nothing no, um no. a couple of you know videos from from two pastors or, or i don't know who they were but that you know every once every three months they had a little talk and 12 views and no one you know so it's kind of depressing right, right. but yeah now I'm, I'm starting to see like like you um there's a kickstarter with some really a successful kickstarter they're doing a 5e i don't know if you saw it i can't yeah uh, adventurer's I'm, guide to the bible Was what was that it the one adventurer's guide to the bible to 5e or something like that was it it had an old testament one and now they have a new testament one that's just oh i don't happening know right now maybe i'm wrong yeah on that. it's 5e it's very oh, they have one happening now yeah so it's... if they have one happening now maybe i'm just not aware of that oh it's called red panda uh, publishing red panda uh, that sounds right i mean i could google yeah, it anyway could... but that was kind but of yeah cool i mean if that. that's the one they did then the, i think their other one was old testament uh, yeah but i thought it crossed into jesus times i don't know yeah i don't I bought them. I just haven't looked through them yet. Okay. Anyway, I'm just top of my head. I'm familiar with it. Yeah. 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 And then also, um, uh, the without Kevin Crawford, the without world without numbers guy. Okay. Never. Yeah. He did one and it's Christian. It's called, uh, um, wolves of God. <laughs> it's over there. <laughs> okay. Wolves yeah. Of God. I and, wasn't familiar with, uh, I'm not familiar with it. Yeah. yeah. I'm barely, I'm just, uh, uh, I have the book. I've, I've looked through it. I have it. I've had, it's, it's it's strange um okay. to me but anyway that his theology was was spot on i was like oh wow this is okay. pretty good pretty good you yeah. know in there i was like oh wow this guy's definitely a christian or something uh, but anyway i'm just kind of an, i'm encouraged you in some find, sense huh i find that um when it gets into things like the deeper i've got into like understanding um like behemoth and other things like that in the bible the more i understand where the mythology came from or the references came from and what they're referring to um then the more i've done that the more i realize that like for example i think final fantasy has a better understanding of what behemoth is in their art than what a lot of christian pastors have when they're talking about well i think it's a hippopotamus or i think it's oh you know, a dinosaur or, you know, whatever. It's like, actually, like, for example, in that case, like, uh, you know, behemoth is plural, bahimot is plural for cow. And it's like, but but when you use the plural instead of a singular, it's kind of like saying Elohim for God, like plural instead of Elohim singular, Eloha singular. And it's like the plural is magnifying. So it makes it bigger. So that's like super cow, you know, mm -hmm. but they have to look in the Bible where to translate it cow and you know cattle and where to translate it behemoth but like their art if you look at the the um the final fantasy art mm -hmm. like they're actually making it like like bovine to a degree like it's like a little bit liney in the front but like you see the hooves and you know like it's it's interesting and it's like wow i find that a lot of um secular people because i don't think they're 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 going straight to pastors to understand things oh, instead no. they're looking into the old you know whatever's written like they're looking into the lore and so they sometimes get it closer to right than christians do <laughs> behemoth, so behemoth. when he said his theology spot on i'm like maybe he's looking at <laughs> i don't know yeah what um yeah the, one thing I, I like i had a guy tell me the other day he, he was he, he that i know we do medieval armored combat and he said he was intrigued by what i was doing because he has a summer camp and they but they teach about ancient history. Yeah. And, you know, and I'm like, awesome. oh, and cause my game is also to kind of get kids intrigued by, uh, the dark ages in history. Yeah. But he, he brought up, yeah, we teach ancient history at the summer camp. I'm like, oh, like what? And he goes, well, we teach about the, what do you say? The Egyptians, yeah. the, the Persians. Okay. I'm like, well, and I didn't bring it up cause it's like, I just, you know, I'm not here for this, but uh, I'm like, well, what about Israel? You know, <laughs> they don't want right, to bring, exactly. they're not going to bring yeah. up Jerusalem or Israel. They're not, gonna, that's not part of ancient history to well, any education yeah. system. And it's like, <laughs> but they huge impact on the ancient yeah. history and huge yeah. impact on modern history. And, and, you know, yeah. 
Alexander the Great went through there and talked to those guys. Yeah. And if, yeah. if you just look at the the spread of Christianity and what it did to, I mean, just the Roman Empire and beyond, yeah. if you, it's almost like, how can you, could you not spend a significant, if you're really talking about history, look at, give a significant look to the root of that, where it came from, you yeah. know? So, I mean, it's like a world changing thing. Yeah. So anyway. Yeah. And, and, you know, one other thing, like, like Christians spread, they use violence to spread Christianity, you know, like that's sort yeah, of a they, con, they common do. thing. Sure, yeah. And I'm like, well, and in my game, it's like, well, if you come up to a village and they want to sacrifice their children, um, are, are, are they going to just give that up? I mean, what do you, what do you do? You know, you, you're telling us that we were violent. Well, they're sacrificing their children. I mean, stop doing that. Oh, okay. We'll stop sacrificing our children. Is that how, is that how it played out then? Or, you know, there was, there was violence. Sure. We have to, you know, and that's, and my game is sort of allowing that to happen, like allowing kids or families to see that, not with sacrificing children, but, but with, <laughs> but at least with, you know, the, the tribes and the pagans were not going to give up whatever it was they believed in did. Yeah. That was usually horrifying. You know, that was usually terrible or oppressive. Yeah. And yeah, so, the, of, yeah. you know, so I wanted, that's kind of what I wanted to do. I wanted to, to show okay. that Christians, missionaries go out and do things, but there's foibles, there's, there's mishaps, there's, sure. um, and then the, the things that they come up against were, were idiotic, you know, the, 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 the concepts, why not sacrifice? Why not slaves? Why not sacrifice? Why not, why not give right. up things and just, but have fun with it and make, and make fun of everybody, including the Christians. That's, that's what I saw was, you know, you're having fun with the stuff, yeah. um, from the little bits I've seen. Um, I've watched a few of the videos, you know, right. The playthroughs, you know, I'm trying to, yeah, get and those. of course your, your Kickstarter, you know, preview uh -huh. thing. Right. Um, so, but yeah, some of the playthroughs and, um, I like how lighthearted it is, uh, that you're doing. I like how you're just directly tackling it straight on. So what I found, and this is what Dragon Raid did, and this is what Holy Lands does is they, um, create, they basically are, are it, trying to keep. Um, a fantasy feel, right? Like how D and D feels with monsters and other things, right? But somehow make it Christian, and so in I, I don't know the explanation Dragon Ray gave for why there's goblins and everything else, you know, in there. Um, I, I again, I may be misquoting Holy Lands. I have two of the three books they have, but um, it it seems from what I understand that these are, they try to very much try to differentiate between holy and unholy, but um, their monsters are pretty much manifested spirits or demon possessed humans. Mm -hmm. And so um, you still f have this fantasy feel kind of, um, and, but it's not, um, you know, you're, you're humans taking these things on and your game. I liked that you were humans taking on human situations. Yeah. And you were actually, so it, it may be a limited window. I don't know how many people are going to be interested in, you know, or not. I don't know how many people are going to be interested in um, role-playing a missionary, you know, but if you get them to try it, I think it's one of those things where if you get them to try it, if they're Christian, it'll be, it'll be appealing. I don't know how many non-Christians it'll appeal to, uh, but yeah. that's true with anything that has a, it has a Christian attached to it. Right. Um, that's one of the things that I'm dealing with is how much, you know, do I, bank on or or shoot for even uh, a non-christian audience it, you know it i played a, i played the god of war uh video game you know that was based on north mythology that that video game not the older ones um i didn't play the older ones but in that one you know i don't believe norse mythology to be the case and the game assumes it is the case but i enjoyed the game so that's, that's cuz we're christian know. we're okay with <laughs> yeah so it's like so it's like, I, I, you know, non-Christian, if they're not offended by the concept of Christianity, they could enjoy the game if it's a setting and not a sermon. I feel like the quoting the Bible verses and that in Dragon Raid might have come across uh, Sunday schoolish, maybe, or like more, more like a sermon, you know, yeah. like you're trying to convert me, aren't you? I'm not trying to convert people. I'm just trying to make the game realistic and true to the faith, you know. I'm true totally to trying to convert people. And you, I know, <laughs> yours is different. That's what I'm saying. We are going on two totally different, uh, you know, tracks and doing the opposite things. But we're, but I think our mindset is similar. Yeah. Um, I think what we want is similar, and that's what intrigued me, and that's why I reached out to you. Well, okay. So one, two, two points. One, I do have what like Holy Lands. I do have demon uh, okay. possessed. And I heard you mention that, and yeah. and and freaky, and you can go more freaky deaky if you want to. 
And yeah, there's okay. plenty of myth and folklore to back that up. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Evil spirits um, in, in the founding fathers, the, the, the early church fathers dra mentioned dragons. They mentioned spirits. They mentioned. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to, I'm, and I'm going to certainly push that to, to the nth degree if I can, but okay. still try to keep it grounded in some, some reality that creates that myth or, or fear that people well, are, all, that, you know, okay. that overgrows its boundaries in, in, in yeah. their expectations. So like feral, like demon infested boars, demon infested giant, there'll be giants, you know, but I see 10 to 12 feet yeah. tall giants, not 20 feet. Yeah. So, yeah. so you're having them be tangible, physical things that they are like the Legion oh. guy, you know, I'm Legion. Okay. So see, that's different Hulk. than that. Yeah, like yeah, that's, dude. Di that's different that's, uh, and more realistic, I'd say, yeah. uh, or possible than I, my, my mental breakdown I have or disconnect I have is when it gets to, and it's fine if you're doing a fantasy, you just want to have a fantasy and do it. You're not going for anything that could really be, but I don't see uh, when, when it gets to them not being like a, demon infested boar or something you said but more like just a this wicked spirit and you are fighting it like you would in D D with a magical weapon or something like no, you, that if, if you're making an allegory or something i guess or you're just trying to you know explore fantasy i guess but we don't see that's definitely not the way we see spiritual warfare happen in the bible we don't see humans taking weapons and fighting spirits directly right you know what i mean it's, it's human yeah and, it's a human based it's a yeah. you're, you're taking on a human who has given been given a, yeah, a strength or a craziness, really a rabidness, you know? you know, or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, and that it's, it's is a little less. I wouldn't disconnect from that as easily. Right. <laughs> I think. Yeah. Yeah. Does um, that make sense? What I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Because okay. I'm I'm been this, I'm I'm going through that right now um, to see You've how far I want to take this or not take it um, as far as yeah. that goes. Yeah. Um, That's a fun exercise, if nothing else, to explore that. <laughs> Um, and then the second point, oh my God, what's the second, the, that was the first point. And then the second point, which you just said, ah, uh, stolen the thunder. Uh, what was it? Cause you brought up something else and uh, I wanted to tackle. Um, oh my gosh. You know, you just, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll figure it out when I, yeah. What was the other thing? Uh, oh, um, oh, conversion and all that. Um, yeah. So yeah, 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 yeah. I, yeah. I want this to be. For now, edification for us, for kid, for homeschoolers, for families, gotcha. for Christians. Yeah. Okay. I want it yeah. to be some. I want it to be an alternative. I want to say to Christians, you don't have to be stuck on D and D, or, right. or 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 OSRs. They don't want you know, they don't want you right. They they want you yeah. to leave as soon as possible. It's not white men that they want to leave to leave technically right. It's it's Christian, white Christian men. And if you're a black and you're a Christian and and believe in the Bible, they want you to leave too. I mean, I don't to, know how all that. I, I haven't know. dug deep enough in, so I'd be interested at some point to know. Well, Kyle, Kyle I, brings I watched the you know, OSR thing, but I just catch the. I yeah. watch some Asian. I'm more into the. I breast on the legal side of it than on the, uh, for lack of a better term, woke side of. Well, things. the the Watts, you know, they're 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 doing their they're trying to do their rounds of interviews to try to repair their the damage they've done. And okay. Kyle Brinks, I haven't watched those. Yeah, and Kyle Brinks said that the. He okay. tried. He told the two, I guess, black interviewers, uh, the sooner white men can leave, the better for the game, for the game. And he said that a week ago, or a few days wow. ago. Or... Okay, so I'll have to go watch some of these videos then, because that's. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I got the sense. So he doesn't want you. He wants you to leave. Very. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I'll just say I mean, half, there's a once unnamed, half of me to leave. Uh, there's an unnamed virtual tabletop that I won't name, and um, at one point years ago uh like you know maybe five ish years ago i approached them um because i'm doing Roll 20 i'm guessing I'm, anyway go ahead i'm doing a <laughs> uh, sig significant um app companion app portion to what i'm doing there's a lot of tech involved in a vtt would that that the, what i was finding was no uh virtual tabletops because my system is so different than other game systems that they just there, it took a lot of finagling to try and make it kind of work for my system, hmm. but they were all set up to work with the brand, the big names. Like, hey, it's real easy. By default, you can just run D and D, and they even had some slightly more obscure ones. I mean, I might offend a fan here by saying that Shadowlands is obscure, but comparatively, Shadowlands is old school and not so much, you know, in the main thing right now. Um, but like Shadowrun, sorry, not Shadowlands, Shadowrun, and um, but like that's one that like they even had stuff for that and um i 
when I talked to them, I kind of got the answer uh, or the impression without saying it directly to me, but it was pretty um, that um, it, it may have been my uh, ethnicity or other things, uh, my gender, but it definitely, they, I don't think they wanted to work with, they didn't want to have their, their brand Christian. tied to anything Christian. Yeah. Yeah. As I long definitely as, got as, long as it's pagan. You, yeah. That's the thing. Just like you said, war, God of war. Everyone thinks God of war is a, is a public domain general everyone acceptable thing that's paganism yeah. paganism believes yeah everything's yeah. acceptable just not christianity yeah, it's not <laughs> christianity. yeah exactly and just, that's the just thing. not that one yeah. yeah anyway so oh yeah so you were trying to develop it or of course maybe it was foundry anyway you don't have to tell me but um um and i said i don't want to name it because i said some not nice things and i don't want it to get around but yeah. if you start browsing the internet you might find other people having similar experiences well wow. i'll leave it at that yeah so for mine i kept it simple so that in foundry i don't need i just need their basic simple thing you know and yeah. and i just use that so yeah okay so let's go let's let's now finally after how many minutes how many 26 minutes let's talk about your game oh okay. <laughs> that's the intro yeah, sure sure so, no that's fine um yeah so the history so, of it and just talk about yeah, it yeah, yeah. uh what i'm trying to do is a little different you know i'm i'm really just trying to make it um Again, I'm not trying to directly convert people because I, I I think that it'll have a wider reach, even among Christians. I think that because, you know what, um, I'll, I'll give credit to Andrew Lowen on this quote. Uh, this isn't an exact quote because I don't remember how exactly he said it. But this concept, Andrew Lowen is the creator of Deliverance board game. I'm giving him a shout out here. But he also has like angels and stuff, but his are more... Uh, like a modern -y concept of uh, of angels where I'm going like ancient Old Testament stuff, you know, Hebrew. But um, anyway, he said that, you know, uh, non-Christians don't want a game that wants to save them because they don't, they're like, I don't want to be saved. And then it's like, what are you trying to do? Like, no. And then a Christians often don't want it because they're like, well, I don't need to be saved, you know? And so you end up having nobody that, that, wants to go there is was his you know observation and i get that to a point now i think that again if like you're going to with the targeted marketing you're talking about stuff that may very well uh absolutely work and if you you know and again you're exploring it you're not just offering you're offering something different you're not just offering the same game that is D, &D but christian if all you are is inferior D and D and Christian, you're not going to go anywhere. Yeah. So that's the thing is you're, that's why I was interested. You're offering something different. And that's what I'm trying to do is nobody's really doing um, your characters are these uh, immortal beings that have been around through all of history. And um, you know, that, are involved in um, everybody's the center of the story in most role playing games. Like you're like, hey, the story is completely all about us and my character and what I do with my character. And you that know, in this affects case, kingdoms and stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's like, and, and in this game, in Allies of Majesty, the uh, the you're you are serving two stories. You're a you're an actor upon two stories. God's overarching story with humanity and what's going on there. And you're a participant in individual or small groups of humans stories, and you have an impact on their stories. So in all these cases, you're not serving to promote your own agenda, you're serving others. And um, it, it really is what Jesus talks about, you know, to serve others. If you want to lead, you need to serve. And who wants to be first needs to be last, you know. And so you're walking that out. And as distant as role playing a uh a, an angel you know maybe a spiritual being may be from a human it's actually when you get into it very very relatable to the christian walk and that kind of only makes sense because you know according to paul you know we're going to have a different flesh in the end when when all said and done and we're going to be like the angels you know what i mean we're going to be or jesus even said you'll be like them and, and he was talking about socially but still you know there's a lot of scriptures that talk about we're going to have a different flesh you know and um 
so i mean maybe what their role is and what our role in being christ-like is supposed to be isn't that far apart but i find that in playing the game you definitely get um a better sense of what it is like to really be a christian you know what i mean and you're role playing something greater than yourself and higher than yourself and and you can excuse it because you're trying to be an angel instead of trying to be a a, a saint <laughs> <laughs> you know what i'm saying like playing a saint is boring but playing an angel with spiritual warfare and all that's exciting is what some people might think right. you know it's, it's, well um, it's this yeah. you're kind of it's gonna you're correct me if i'm wrong but like a superhero helping the people around um, it really is. Not. Yeah. 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 Right. You're, you're in most cases, they don't know you're there. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, in most cases they're unaware. Hide your identity. So <laughs> that is, well, that's, yeah. Yeah. That's kind of a, um, you know, there's times where you'll appear to humans for something and stuff. I mean, what fun would it be if you didn't get to ever? Yeah. Um, but well, it says you, the Bible that, you, you know, you the will. The Bible that you do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, and so how many times have you unattained or entertained angels unaware and all that? Yeah. Um, but it, it, it really is, though, it's a different role-playing approach because you've got to think creatively. How do I steer this person's thoughts or this situation to good? How do I prevent this person of evil intent? How do I help this person just pray and ask for the help that they need? So you're talking and, about you the know, player or the GM? The, the player's asking those questions. As they play the angel. player oh, okay. is act, yeah, in their role, in their situations, is asking these questions. The GM, or, or in my case, the host in my game. Uh I know everybody has to have their own name. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, right. It's 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 uh it's D and D's fault because they they took Dungeon Master for everybody, so everybody's got to make their own name. Um but anyway, uh, the host often has to ask, how do I create that story? How do I set up a story in which the people don't feel um, railroaded, you know, oh, oh. In, in how how to do things? Uh, because the game is linear. You're you're if you're a servant of um, is linear is not railroading, though. That's an interesting. No, no, I know. I, I, I don't yeah, even yeah. mind either. As long as the railroad yeah. isn't you're a jerk. You railroad no, yeah, them in the yeah, sense yeah, yeah, yeah. of you compel so, them. It's it's got to be compelling railroading, not exactly. Jerk You've got to give them a reason that yeah. they're not going to do other things. Like if I actually play in a, 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 I'm a completionist. Like if I'm playing a video game, I'll do the side quests. You know, I got to <laughs> do all the side quests. But then if I actually try to role play, because it's supposed to be a role playing game, if I put my mind in the character, then I don't do hardly any side quests because my I'm like why would I wait 10 years, not really 10 days or something right. to go save this kid in the cave because I want to do these side quests. <laughs> like that's urgent. He might be dead. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's gotta be, yeah, you get, it's gotta yeah, be compelling. So, railroading is only compelling. really, yeah. you're only, only going to complain about railroading when you feel like they're, they're forcing something on you and you just no, don't yeah, get yeah. the point of it. No, but, but, but so the way it's linear is a lot of times you'll, you're, you're given direct on a direct assignment. You're said yeah. you need to go do this thing or influence this thing or prevent that thing. So that's what you do in the game that you set it up. That's like that. a lot of what the game is. There yeah. are times where you could do like a long-term assignment. You're going to go watch <sighs> over these people. And as situations come up, you decide how you're going to watch over them. You know, mm -hmm. what's the best way. But a lot of times you're sent to, you know, this person or these people prayed over this situation. You are the answer answer to that prayer, go and address that situation the best you can. And if their prayer, there are times you'll be defeated. So there's no character death because you're immortal. So right. you defeat the, the, you, that's another unique feature is, you know, you defeat the bad guys, they'll recover. Eventually you get defeated, you'll recover eventually. And so defeat may have consequences. Like if you're trying to uh, save somebody's life, that person, you might not save their life you know if you're defeated and can't defend them but otherwise though i mean you grow as a character you don't just lose your character and got to make a new character you're you're a lot of the most formative moments in players uh experience with the game is in defeat and how they respond to that defeat and they suffer they they, they um suffer defeat and then they see the most growth as a character the most development and i mean any good movie you're going to have situations where the protagonist is defeat suffering defeat or in a position yep. of defeat that's where they grow into the hero they will be right. you know so i love a game that puts you in that situation isn't worried about oh no what if i total party kill you know there's no worry about that it's like you'll come back and you'll you just fail that mission and then those, yeah. those yeah. people all yeah. suffer because of you 
Yeah, or something <laughs> happens. Yeah. Or like sometimes you do everything right and the human makes a different decision still. The humans still do what they're going to do because they have, you know, and you you did everything you could, but you know, you're kind of find yourself relating to God in those situations where it's like, I did everything I could. <laughs> and look, here you are. Now I know I know you're uh, I think you're more Calvinist uh in your so I try to keep the game, that's a good <laughs> thing. I try to keep the game pretty uh uh denominationally agnostic. Yeah. I want Calvinists to or reformed folk to put what they think into it theologically, you know, their twists on theology that may be different from like an Eastern Orthodox person or something else. I want people of various faiths, uh, well, not faith, sorry, various <laughs> aspects of Christianity uh -huh. and even some, uh, even, even, even Jewish people really can, can, if they don't, if they stick to the old Testament part, this is like right, right. up all their stuff, you know, yeah. it only differs when we get into the new Testament stuff. But, um, anyway, I want people of that Judeo, which I would argue with doesn't really change at all, but <laughs> well, exactly. I'll, no, no, no. That's a lot of what my, what my game explores. That's a lot of what my lore explores. Yeah. It's helping people that remember I said, uh, we don't really know our old Testament as, as, as I love the Christian. old Testament. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Digging into it, but pe all, everybody it's changing some nowadays, but people mostly preach off the new Testament. And when they do go to the old Testament, it's just for a verse right. or one little anecdote, yeah. you know? Yeah. Anyway, um, so I really didn't describe my game at all. I just described I'm, how I'm plays. confused. Yeah, no. Um, <laughs> gosh, and I, when you're talking, I, I think of something and then I forget. I know. <laughs> so, you know, I know. Um, so but what's the though. setting though? What's because the setting? Faith, what's what's faith, the time frame? We have a faith in everything. It does get exciting, yeah. and there's so much we do. We are passionate about. Oh, and that's what okay. you know is exciting. Okay, make me yeah, up. Mark it Sorry. down. Or... I got to write this down while you. Okay, I, I just remembered. Yeah. Sorry. Mission. Yeah, I'm, so, mission. So, so my setting. I can, I can, I can um, sum that up briefly. The setting is any time in our world's history or oh, near okay. future. You know, it could be any time from creation until the end. It could be any time you want. So you, so if you when you bring up the a... end is until the year three thousand, then you can make it space odyssey or something. I don't care. Uh, that'd be interesting, but generally it's on. It's confined to our Earth generally. Um, but you could get creative anywhere from the beginning to the end. But the spirit realm keeps a very ancient near eastern feel and a very old testament a very uh bronze agey feel so your the way you fight uh the weapons you and, and 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 you don't really use tangible weapons generally or armors and whatever you don't have the the way your characters appear because the, because their spirits is the way they want to be seen mm -hmm. and the way it communicates something so like if they present a certain face it may just be their uh like the lion face on the warrior it's that God created them and put this purpose, this warrior's purpose into them. And they display the lion face in as a symbol of their a, a agreeing with that purpose <laughs> and clinging to that purpose. So they don't have a literal lion face, but that's why you see that in biblical references. Right. And that's where I start to stray into, you know, meta or symbolic stuff. But the Bible is symbolic in a lot of ways. Like there's so many things in the Bible that have symbolic meaning. And we want to look at, get hung up on the literal meanings and not look at what is the picture that they're painting. Yeah. What are they trying to tell us? You're a storyteller, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, you went, So for you though, you, in your, with your group, what settings are you in like right now? Like what do you, uh, how do you. Okay. Yeah. It, it, there, it varies. Uh, like the starter campaign that I'm going to offer in the starter box uh, mm -hmm. when this is all released will be um, in Rome um first like third like 300 right after constantine said that christianity is legal uh -huh. you know uh that's when that story takes place uh, -huh. uh but like i it just depends on who's running the game i have uh like advanced play you can get into actually maintaining a a a, a holy uh hold in you know like this related to some earthly thing you know or or stuff like i um have a hold in 1990s dominican republic right near the border of haiti and um there's a missionary that i have there that my my characters i have multiple when you get into this you know in in late gameplay it's optional it's not like you have to do it some people are like i just want one character and i want to swing a sword and then tell me if i hit the end you know but the people that want that depth i have late game depth in the game so wait what do you say 
happen. late late game late, late game like like um tier like higher tiers of characters you can actually you know like one oh, of the oh, complaints i've heard about dnd is that high level play right. is is late game is a video game I, term right, uh, right. high thinking. level play is is um unwieldy you know, not balanced and unwieldy <laughs> yeah. and a lot of the pathfinder proponents say pathfinder's got that down and it's balanced all the way through i don't know i haven't gotten to late gay or high level yeah. play but i have a lot of high level play options as you progress in tiers in the game new options of play open up to you things that weren't there before you don't they're optional you don't have to do them right. but it's like you don't stay bored with the world you know um because new things open up so anyway yeah i 1990s dominican republic with a missionary that's near haitian border so he doesn't go into haiti he's actually serving dominican but spiritually my character's based out of there often have to go into Haiti for various reasons. So it's, because but then of, I'm dealing with what about the, the spiritual princes, the spiritual principalities that rule, like, you know, now I crossed in and I offend the, the Prince of Haiti that comes and addresses me and, you know, tries to keep me from doing that. And you know what I mean? Like you get into this Daniel kind of stuff and that's where fantasy comes in. How does that really work? You know, we're just going off the old Testament ideas and so like now, you know, that whole story of being detained for 21 days or, you know, yeah, it's that's like, weird. Yeah. That, that can like play out, you know, right. like you're like, oh, and you're dealing with politics. Like, how do I help these people, but keep it on the down low enough that I don't upset these way more powerful spirits yet? Because now's not the time. If God told me to boldly charge him, I'd charge him and suffer defeat if I do, or God will bless my hand and I'll defeat them, you know, myself. But otherwise, without that mandate, you're like, you got to play it smart. You know, like you don't go into, in, into China as a human missionary and just start handing Bibles out everywhere and throwing, you know, <laughs> you don't go nuts. Say, I am a Christian. Everybody have church at my place. You know, you're going to play it smart, you know? And so same thing in the politics of the spirit realm with these spiritual rulers. You, are you talking about spiritual rulers in a sense of, demo, of demons? Demonic. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like the rulers, powers, principalities, all that kind you're of stuff. You're talking about them. And, and so yeah, you're yeah. saying the angel has to go through and and figure out what kind of deal with that. Yeah. Cause they right. exist, you know, and in yeah. the old Testament, they're legitimate power. Okay. So let me get back to this um, ancient view. This is what I find again. So my game, this is where I try not to be a commentary on what I think is true or not. I just try to represent the ancient view that we see in the Bible. Uh -huh. So there's a lot of scholars that really dig into this. And this is one yeah. of those controversial things, but like, um, Deuteronomy 32 kind of presents the idea and other things. Psalm 82 backs it up. There's lots of things that back it up. That post Babel, when God divided up the people, you know, by their language, yeah. he also disinherited the, the people until he called Abraham out as a sign of not giving up on humanity, you know, and he uh, assigned rulers, spiritual rulers, lesser Elohim from his divine counsel, uh, lesser, not Elohim is just spirit being. That's all that means. Like when, when the, uh, the medium of Endor calls up Samuel's, uh, Samuel and Saul's like, what do you see? She's like, I see an Elohim. It doesn't mean God. We use that term for God, but that's not all it means. So these lesser spirit beings, he assigns, you know, angels, he assigns to run oversee these shepherd, these nations, and that's where you get in Daniel, the idea of the prince of Persia and the prince of Greece and your prince, Michael. So like even after he called out Israel, there would be this sense of that he still assigned Michael over them, even though they're his inheritance, Yahweh's God's inheritance. He assigned Michael over them as a prince, you know, oversee them. And so you get into this where then in Psalm 82, he's judging these. Uh, it says he say Yahweh, you know, it says stands in his council and holds judgment in his council. And he stands among, it says Elohim stands among the Elohim is what the scripture says. There. Wow. I'm so, I totally don't have yeah. gotten into any of that. So yeah, it's awesome. Right. It's crazy stuff. But see what I'm doing is I'm not trying to say, Hey, you got to believe all this stuff. Um, I'm saying, look, this is in our Bible. Yeah, I'm intrigued. Yeah. Be interested and just explore it and see where it goes and see what it does to your understanding. So long story short, those, those, they, they accept worship. These, these, other, you know, yeah. uh, yeah, the angels, they accept worship. They start to maybe demanding it. They, 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 and they, they, they elevate the unrighteous and don't take care. They don't do what God says through the rest of the Bible. Take care of the needy, the orphan, the widow, you know, take care of these people. You're not, they're not doing it. They're enriching the wicked and all these things. And they're accepting worship for themselves. And he judges them and says, your time's coming. 
in Psalm 82, if you look at it. Wow. And then Jesus, a lot of his saying, the kingdom is now, this is the, the kingdoms here. It's come into the kingdom of God. It's come out of the kingdoms of this world where the rulers, the spiritual rulers come out of their kingdoms because now it's not just for Israel. It's, it's, it's always Israel's just been a symbol uh, to the rest yeah. of the world. If I haven't given up and always, if somebody came from a Gentile nation, God accepted them. Always. We see that all the, all throughout right. the old Testament. Yeah. And so now it's Jesus is saying, look, and his work on the cross, he defeated these, these spiritual rulers and now they're 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 not just judged by God in Psalm 82 in the Old Testament. You've got them defeated through Christ's, you know, sacrifice and, and death and resurrection. And um he they're defeated now, but then they're still allowed because God wants to wait until maybe some people go with the Paul's talking about the fullness of the Gentiles. Some reason God's delaying out of mercy so more people can accept, but whatever it is, God is delaying. And so these spiritual rulers, although they're de legally defeated, they're allowed for a time, just like where it talks about in Revelation, where Satan is upset because he knows he's defeated and he's been cast to the earth. He's not allowed to come talk to God anymore. There's no place found for him in heaven, but he's upset because he knows he has but a short time. And he goes to make war with the woman's other children, which would sound like Christians to me. Uh, but anyway... And that's what we see. So these, that's kind of the backdrop. Are you playing Old Testament, New Testament kind of shifts Dang. things? <laughs> that's pretty cool. I'm gonna, it's fun. I'm definitely going to reread, reread the Old Testament with, with, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, I've, I've read that. I've, I remember that the council and all that stuff, but I, and the, and the, yeah. and the, and the, and the, and the, and the angel saying, I got held up. I'm like, dang, that's serious stuff, man. What, what is that? You know? So that's kind of, that's intriguing. And that's all I'm doing I is making a I didn't playground. Even, yeah. Pick on that. Yeah. I, I want to make a playground in a role-playing game to explore this in a way that isn't like you don't feel the pressure of, oh, I've got to believe it one way or the other and right. all this. Just explore it, have fun. And that's why I, you know, that's why I'm trying not to necessarily say I'm trying to convert people because if I'm doing that, then I've got this thing where I've got to present what I think is the best right. theology. I'm just trying to present the source material. That's yeah. what I'm trying to do. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. For mine, that's, that's the one I was trying to remember. The, um, I'm not trying to convert people either. And I'm trying to keep the, um, the theology just at the, planning church level gotcha. where, where you yeah. just trying to get them to yeah. accept the, 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 the Christian faith. And then if they, you know, if they do, you get to plan a church, you bring in some clergy and then yeah, you're, yeah. Off, you're off to the next mission. So it's really exactly. bad. That's right. yeah, kind that's, of Paul, Pauline kind of, that's uh, the depth yeah. of it. It's, I don't want, you know, it's not a theology debate between you and the, the Duke or the, the pagan. It's more exactly. of um, yeah. just stop doing horrible things to other people. Okay. And, or we'll stop you from doing horrible things to other people. <laughs> And then you're just going to, yeah. you know, and then we're going to plant a church here. And then that's, and then you get, and then you get your glory points, your experience points. And, okay. Okay. And then move on to the next one. So it's, it's yeah. basically that over and over. Yeah. And it's mission based because, uh, I haven't, I can do like a hex crawl type of thing at some point with it, which yeah. is what I'm doing for the, um, the apocalyptic one. That's much easier. Okay. But for the initial one, I'm doing it more mission based. Like, you know, the, okay. It's, Go to the next town and see what's up there. What's a miss there? Yeah, what's a miss there? That makes sense yeah. for now. And then if, if someone wants to create a more roaming around the Germanic right. forest hex crawl, that's fine by me. Yes, but um, yeah, that's another that's, thing we're opposite on. You know, uh, in the sense of you are very rules light. Let's just have fun. It's very heavy into the role playing, which is awesome. Yeah. You know, and, and the people that want that experience. Uh, you can find it in Allies of Majesty, but not, um, I mean, like it's, well, okay, it's there, but it's harder because it's easier to put yourself in the mindset of a human. The first thing I have to tackle with people is, are you expecting a certain behavior out of me? How do I role play an angel? What's okay? Am I allowed to make a joke? You know, like right. you get into that kind of stuff and it's like, yeah, just chill, dude. It, we're ha First of all, we're just playing a game. So be yourself and have fun, but also just understand being yourself shouldn't violate certain, uh, you know, what, what's your moral things. What but, is your, you know. what, what would you compare your system to? Like the D20 and D6? Well, that's what or, I was going to say. So yeah, the, every role it's, it's, it's it, okay. You know what? I just recently played, um, the, a, a game for somebody in the, uh, hero role-playing system. And it's so crunchy. The hero role-playing system is so, uh, but it's more Not crunchy definitely. in the character building not in the actual uh, gameplay as much. Uh, but it is crunchy in the gameplay too. That's but like superheroes? My character built, yeah, well, they can do anything. You can do anything you want. It's It's been around, it's it's in its sixth edition, I think. I, um, yeah, I, I, you know, they had the Champions version of it. Yeah, but it's, you know, Fantasy Hero, and uh -huh. there's all kinds of, yeah. But um, it's made to be anything. 
like anything from superheroes to 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 you know knights and wizards but um anyway um i think cuz cuz if you say pathfinder then um i would say you're still expecting a lighter game than what i have <laughs> um <laughs> Well, but the thing is, okay, so they, it's your character is never going to die, people, so you might as well get go in depth. <laughs> people, yeah, exactly. Um, people say this: it's it's a it's a learning curve, but once they tackle the learning curve, it's intuitive. I get that. I get the word intuitive a lot uh, in the feedback I get. So, um, and I have lighter versions that you can kind of introduce people, but that's why I'm making an app. I prayed about it. This is God here. I wasn't going to, okay, 18 years ago was the last, well, now probably 19, 19 years ago or so was the last time I thought about or actually seriously tried to, you know, consider publishing. Um, back then it was, how are we going to get, who's, who do I get to publish it? And how am I going to get it in Christian bookstores? You know, that was the, the mode. There was no self-publishing and right. we actually had Christian bookstores. Then we have very few now. I think they're, a, they should be on the endangered. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So ChristianBooks.com. Exactly. That's all I know. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, but brick and mortar stores, you know, yeah, it's like, yeah, you know, yeah they're kind of in a, in a lot of ways, not just book Christian bookstores, but yeah. Um, but anyway, it you know, and and then it was um, I prayed and God was like, it's not ready yet. It's not the time. Don't publish this. No, don't do it. I had a couple opportunities early in, and so then um, around 2018, end of the year, you know, like November or something, he was like, hey, you know, the game you've been working on all this time and everything. And, and you had this one dream you didn't understand and you were just waiting for me to tell you what it meant someday, maybe. That was what this dream's about. You need to publish a game. I'm like, now? He's like, yeah. I was like, oh. So I really start digging in and uh, working really hard on this. But uh, oh, shoot, where were we going with that? Um, oh, the, to the game stuff. system. What kind of game system? But, the game uh, system, you know. yeah. So I'm what how he ins inspired me to do it though was he was like what really got me going to where i started hiring artists and paying people was um it was hey here's an idea for an app that will go with it. and a D hasbro had not bought dnd &D, uh beyond at this point none of that stuff was happening and um and it was you know some ideas that will definitely go beyond what uh, even what they're saying not not virtual tabletop i'm not trying to go there um i'm not trying to do unreal engine and all that stuff i'm using unity but it will manage the flow of gameplay a lot of app games that i'm seeing keep trying to take away what the gm does they try to handle that for you make it like even even uh dnd's talking about an ai gm um you know yeah AI and, dm or dm yes <laughs> ai dm and so um, mine is just trying to reduce that crunch. And I have some ideas of ways that people that want to micro, micro make those micro decisions, the tactical micro decisions still can, but the other people will have a way to mitigate that and avoid that. And I'm purposely not sharing it openly right now because I haven't advertised it yet, yeah, yeah. but um, it will mitigate that, this idea that I felt like God gave me. And I was like, wow. So then people that want the crunchy game, like, okay, let's compare it to Catan. You know, Sellers of Catan, right? No. I mean, I mean, no? on the game, I've never oh, played it. Stupid. Never played it. A lot it. of people would know. So there's base Catan, which is really like simple. And then there's a couple expansions like Cities and oh, Nights. Sure. And, can I, can I pause real quick? Yeah. We're going to, I got to say yeah. my daughter's leaving. I gotta, yeah. Okay. So I'll be, I'll give me one minute. Okay. We'll, yeah, we'll be no right worries. back. Yeah. Uh, remember where you left off. Yes, Catan. Catan thing. All right. And the game system. All right. Hold on a second. A lot of go. people will know. Okay. Settlers a of Catan. lot of people will be familiar with Settlers of Catan. And um, there's the base version, which is very simple. And uh, then there's these a few expansions that really make it a little bit more complex. I mean, it really doesn't make it that much, but it's like, Does for dice? the sake of the example, yeah, like Cities and Knights. And then there's like, uh, like the. I mean, does it have a dice? Yeah. Oh, does Settlers of Catan have a dice? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's a but it's like it's like a Monopoly style. Like I'm saying, like you're rolling two d six or something like that. You know, uh, yeah, it's like you know simple dice. Um, but anyway, um, it's kind of like so you're saying the people that there but there's a debate among players. They either want the simple version or they're like, no, we need cities and knights and all these other things. Like we need those other expansions, right? Um, and so, you know, there's the people that want the complex version of it and the people that want the simple. And I'm like, you mean they could each get what they want out of the game at the same time? 
Like the people that want that simple experience can get it. And the people that want the more complex experience can get it at the same game in the same table. Wow. So that to me was like awesome. And that's what I'm, that's going to be one of my real value propositions is trying to say, look, opposites attract. Usually your friends don't want to play the same type of game you do because you're different personalities. Mm -hmm. So if you can get the experience you want without forcing them along, but you can also get, let them have the experience they want largely without them, without you being bored to tears at the simplicity or vice versa, you know? Yeah. So is, that's, that's kind of the cool thing. What is it? What is it like a D20 or pulled, pulled dice? It, 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 it's seven D12s. Every roll seven D12s. Okay. is seven D12s. Yes. Numeral, you get a little bit of a, I don't try and work actual meaning into the biblical numbers, <laughs> thing, but I do a lot of nods to numerology. Like you'll right. see all kinds of three, seven, 12, 40, yeah, yeah. 144, <laughs> all that stuff. Yeah. Or multiples of those things, you know? Yeah. Yep. 24, all that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I play with that a little and like, I don't want to go there. <laughs> like in the, yeah. In, no, like, it's, it's, in it's, uh, yeah. I don't, you, it, if you wanted to actually assign meaning to it, it's yeah. um it's it'd be you can't make a fun game balanced game and do that that's not right. going to happen but i gave a nod to it like i know it exists i know that right. they're the numbers are important <laughs> um yeah but but the role it's really kind of a um it, it's very dynamic because with 70 12s it's each one so okay imagine you're shooting a three uh, a basketball free throw you know and you might be the same person shooting at the same hoop with the same ball but one time you'll make it and one time you'll miss you know, yep. and what's the difference? And that's what we do with dice and games is we kind of represent, we're saying, well, right. maybe the wind shifted if you're outside, or maybe you were standing a little bit, your thumb was a different position or who knows. Right. But, um, point being, um, you know, that's what the randomness of the dice is. Well, my, each of my, like in an attack, for example, each of those dice, it is not a named aspect, but each of those dice represents some aspect of, how you're attacking the individual and how they defend themselves. And so like there's positive results, neutral and, and, and negative and each certain number, like nine and above three and below is negative nine and above is positive. The middle ones are neutral. And so based on your skill versus mine. So let's say I have precision and, and you're the character I'm attacking and your guard is your defensive skill. We'd compare like my precision and your guard and whoever has the advantage gets to look at that dice roll and then adjust it in their favor. Mm. And the greater your advantage, the more adjustments you get. So by looking at that, though, it's kind of fun because it's like if I have three successes that aren't canceled by negatives, you know, because they get kind of offset. If I have three successes remaining, I'm going to deal a different amount of damage than if I had one success or if I had like seven successes or something, you know, right. like your damage is very dynamic in that regard based on how well the role went. And I can sit there as a, as a GM, as a host, and, and I can look at it and say, oh, there were three or, you know, four successes and three stops, you know, three negatives or, you know, whatever. So those three offsets. So it's like, that would be the three negatives are like their defense, active defense. It accommodates for the enemies or the target's defense. So it's like, Hey, you put up this valiant, awesome strike. It was very, you know, like um, you came in. It were you, they had them kind of dead to rights, but at the last minute they throw up their shield and 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 block it. But your your sword comes off, you know, and and still bites into their shoulder just a little bit on the way by, like a flesh wound. You know, mm -hmm. like you can describe that just by looking at the dice results. Mm -hmm. You don't have to, but you know. Yeah. What you, so what are you what are you providing then to people like a box? You said a box set. Yeah, what I'm developing right now right. is um, I have all the rules on a wiki right now. You can go there and look at it, you know, for free. So it'll be free in that regard. Um, the app itself will be free for players up to a certain point, but I've got, the app is the single most expensive part of my uh, wow. project. So I have to make some money somewhere. It'll be yeah. small things and maybe some cosmetic style microtransactions, optional microtransactions, you know. Have but, to get a uh, microtransactions. Otherwise... What's that? Have to get them, otherwise the game's broken. Microtransactions. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, but I, I don't want to do the thing where it's like you don't get like I don't like this. What I'm hearing rumored that like uh, D and D is saying, look, you don't get access to these subclasses without a subscription. Yeah. I'm like, oh, well, yeah, the levels and stuff. Yeah, so like that's kind of a weird thing. I want people to have access to the entire game without microtransactions or something else. You know what I mean? Uh, or and I'm trying to stay away from subscriptions, but I might 
to have to do like a small annual subscription or something like 12 bucks a year. I don't know that don't quote me on that price. I've got to do that. That was just throwing out a yeah, yeah. weird number, but point being, um, you know, that's what I'm looking at. But like, is it a book? Uh, can you get a, like a hardbound book? Is it going to be like a yeah, thick so, tome? So, or? So, yeah. So the, the rules are in a wiki. The app will be a downloadable product. I do have the starter box, which I have a, you know, just kind of intro how to play the base rules kind of thing or something in it in, in a starter campaign. Um, but then the other product, the book, that's an interesting link. So I'm, I'm, I'm not committed to this, but this is my intent. The rules on the wiki can be updated any minute and you don't have to rebuy books. I don't really like that you're buying fourth, you know, third edition, fourth edition, fifth edition, all these editions of the same game. And I know that some of them had some major changes, but for the most part, it's like you're buying the same books again that you've already bought. If you're a longtime fan, yeah. six times and you're not getting new value added. You are maybe with a new system tweaks, but I just, to me, I'm like, how about instead of that's the old school mode is you got a paper book and the minute you make a change, it's outdated. How about I have digital rules that I can change as we test and feedback comes in and nobody has to buy a new book. And the book that I provide, it would still have the art. It would still have all the concepts, the stuff that you browse the book for. You're When you look at a role-playing book, and correct me if you're wrong or if I'm wrong, <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong on this, if you think differently. But when most people are looking through the book, it's for one of two purposes. They're either looking through to just browse and they're looking at the art and they're reading the concepts and they're reading about the world, or they're making a character or referencing rules in the moment. And they, they need to find the exact thing they're looking for when it's a reference book. Yeah. Would you um, say that's true? I, I get what you're saying. Um, I, and I'm, and I'm think I might have a, a um, a niche opinion about this, but well, I know, but people do. And I need yeah, to but I understand do. the breadth of opinions. I don't, I think you should include the rules. I don't mind. Uh, I love having a book with the rules and, and, and okay. the campaign and yeah. everything. And then if there's a rata, if there's new, new changes, I'll, you know, whatever, I'll go get it or not get it. Um, okay. But if you feel like the rules are fleshed out enough and, and you've played it like, yeah, that, I mean, they're, they're 20 something years developed. Yeah, you know? Exactly. Then yeah. I, I would put them in because I would love to have them in my hands. Okay. Well, I, I'm looking yeah. also at the ability to uh, get a printable PDF or something or some kind of something. Yeah. The The idea with the lore book would be that it has, it's kind of like a coffee table book for Vikings or something where like <laughs> it has National Geographic, like it has all the art and the cool artifacts and all the things you want to know um, as far as about Vikings. And it has, um, you know, you're looking at the pretty pictures and you're reading about Vikings and the world yeah. of Vikings. And so that's kind of what I was thinking of doing. And that way, though, with, with, with the word searchable wiki, at least when you're playing the game, um, people have, um, once they've tried it, people that, that say, oh, I want a book. Once they try it, they don't say, no, I don't want a book anymore. But they say, wow, I underestimated that wiki. The ability to just type in the words you're looking for and quickly find the rule you're looking for and not slow the game down. Yeah, I uh, use I use five e, <laughs> the, yeah, the five e tools know? or whatever. I use yeah. that to when I'm when yeah. I'm DMing my last vestiges of so, D and D yeah. stuff. So I, I'm but, I'm open, um, yeah. but you know I, I still got, love it in I my hand though the rules. But it's hard for me to do both. Uh, maybe I might yeah. even you I might <laughs> even say, hey, look, here's the wiki to start. Here's the lore book. If I get enough demand, that'll be the next yeah. crowdfunding project or something. Yeah, I've already be, uh, got myself so sunk. Yeah, and, you you could you know. You know do a special edition or whatever at some point. Yeah, uh, I'm open to that. That I think that start after with the, the wiki played then, a little bit longer. Yeah, yeah. I think that would be a great idea. Yeah, after public yes. consumption, you can then come out with a special edition. Yes, I neat. think that's a great idea. Yeah. That is a great idea. Because by then I'd have more right, time give, to get give me five percent. I, I was gonna say <laughs> by that time I'll have more time to get more art and stuff too. Because yeah. that's one of the things that will hold me up. Is You're I have good. art, but yeah. you want more. <laughs> I want well, yeah. I want it to be. But you're. I, I don't want to be a knockoff. I don't want to be viewed. I'll just say this: my my opinion. I could be wrong, but my observation and opinion is that um, opinion based on observation is that because we're a Christian product, we're going to be judged more strictly. And so, if you have a a game that's of similar quality to mine in the production, 
and it's non-Christian, people say, oh, that's an indie producer. And okay, that's an indie game. That's an okay and cool one. There's a reason it's not up there with D&D on the, on the production quality. Well, some people argue that on their books and stuff, but that's another thing. Um, you know, the binding and stuff. But then on the other side, um, if it's a Christian product, it's like, see, Christian stuff is so cheap. It's always so lame. That's you me. Know? Like, well, but the thing is, though, I like what you're doing with you own it. Like, you you have a low budget on it. You got the big googly eyes. Cart- cartoons, yeah. You're not trying to, you're not presenting it as, as if it's serious. Yeah. And that's the thing I think that turns people off is they try to present a serious thing, but like a movie, but the quality of the acting and directing is about the quality of a, of a high budget church play, you know? And so, but it's, but it's released in a theater, you know, as a, and it's like, so I get what they're trying to do, but you know, I, people will judge that more harshly than like an indie film, you know, because it's a Christian film. So now it's going to get, so I want that. I want the quality to be there. Yeah. I really want the quality to be there as much as I can get it. Yeah. I, I, um, I'm not, I've never been a polished guy. Even when I worked in the industry, the CG industry, I was always the, I was always the guy that did the rough cut, the rough cuts or okay. the animatics yeah. or the, and I was sure. fast and furious when I did it, um, which yeah. they liked. So, but I yeah. never did the polish and I, I don't have that mindset in my, you know, okay. what I do. So that's kind of why I, yeah, I went with everything I did, the cartoony look, the, the, the rules light, it's all just, yeah. uh, and you know, it, it well, all kind of log- logistics came together. Um, yeah. that way. Yeah. I hear you're fleshing out more stuff. Like I've heard you on a couple of your videos talk about these things you're developing. So yeah. I get, it's kind of like, you're like, here, here it is. And, and I'm throwing that idea out there and I want to make this. And then I'm working on these ideas. You know, that was interesting stuff to listen to. Yeah. And, and I, I did, you know, hire people for artwork and stuff for different projects and stuff. But what I did, I just, for me, I didn't like the delay. I have, you know, I wanted There's to have delay. immediate, I wanted to, I need, this is, I need this. And I need it now, you know, these characters in this big, this, this setting, and I need to throw it in there now and I need to play it this week. And so I said, I can't. Yeah. You're doing live play that way. I'm doing live play, but nothing that has like, I can still grab some random piece of art on the internet that I would, could never publish because it's, it's not on the license to do that, but I could use it in a virtual tabletop, you know, for a second and then be like, okay, look, I'm not giving it to people and you know, yeah. Yeah, I need people to, put it out there on the internet to be, you know, you can download it off Pinterest or whatever. You know? Right. I, and I did a yeah. ton of that when I was doing um, D and D and star Wars and yeah. it was fun. But then at some point I'm really like, well, I can't just keep taking other people's artwork. Well, that's I, it. Yeah. I'm only doing it in a pinch on the artwork. I right. don't have the more artwork I get, the more well, for I'm your own thing. Sure. My own yeah. stuff. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I didn't like that delay part. And then, you know, so I, and I, and I, and I have a background in art, so I, like yeah. I, I, it was funny as I lost my ability to draw there for 10 years. I just couldn't draw at all. I was like, Oh, it was painful. Um, and I just had to force myself to, you know, get that, you know, like obviously it's cartoony, like physically, no, no, mentally, painful, like mentally. That's mentally. what I thought you meant, but yeah, I didn't know with all the, well, I went, maybe, uh, you had like no. a, maybe you had a battle accident <laughs> with your yeah. medieval battles. I, don't know. I got my ax, my wrist crunched. You know, you said that the helmet really like, I, I see, I, I pay attention. The helmet, like, um, you know, acts like a shield. Like it just doesn't feel the same getting hit in the head, but maybe that one time, <laughs> you know, I got kind of left you and I can't do my art for a few years. Kind of. There's place. a well-known Polex guy who, who rang my bell and, um, for the first, one and only time I've ever got my bell, my a bell rang, and it was it was crazy. I was like, "Wow, I'm this is what a concussion almost feels like." I didn't go out, I didn't get knocked out. Okay, by it. it was crazy. It was it was it was interesting. I'm I like, did I have brain damage? Yeah, <laughs> so you that? might have had a concussion <laughs> still because you know just because you didn't pass out. I don't know. <laughs> well, I, I I you know within a minute or two I, I was fine. Uh, okay, but I was okay. but and it was it was giddy. I had a giddy feeling after that. Um, <laughs> but all uh, the natural chemistry kicking in you well know. you know you, you like you know you want to feel things that are extreme and, and crazy and that yeah. was one of them yeah. that was great yeah but uh but, seriously anyway. yeah i can um, imagine so yeah okay i so when what is your time frame then when are you gonna like you know boom this is yeah. my thing yes. what, what do you think i i i i like I've always respected companies that have ever done this. Um, I think Blizzard was that way. Uh, before I worked Act- at Blizzard. I was going to say before Activision. Um, I don't know when you worked there. There, I worked uh, at, um, right after the right after they came out with um, uh, Warcraft One. 
Okay, yeah. So this is back in those days where, yeah, like, like, when they release stuff, it was when it's ready. You know what I mean? When we get it, that was there. Yeah. You know, at least that's the that's what the public perception was. And uh, so you might have a different story on your end, but um, that uh, that's the attitude I like. Is I don't. Oh, I, so I you know when? So you're saying you don't know when you're going to listen? <laughs> well, no, no. I I, I waited twenty something years. I don't want to shortchange something because of just a self imposed. Okay. No, no. Yeah, I don't want to. But, but if everything goes well, if I can get, you know, cause funding could, could affect this stuff. And with crowdfunding, it's really important. I've seen the, the more you show, the more you can raise, the more you're actually professional look polished. If you <laughs> don't have me. something of quality, <laughs> it's going to, it's not going to go anywhere. If you don't have something, yeah, but your goal is what $2,000, you know, yeah. like that's different. Yeah. So um, yeah, like, I mean, my goal is you know, it depends on how much funding I can raise, but I mean, you know, I might have a, I'm definitely gonna be in the, in the high tens. Uh, it might be, you know, a hundred thousand dollar goal, you know, who knows? Yeah. I don't know where my goal is going to be. It depends on the funding I get beforehand. So you're uh, just working on now, just minimum, to figure that out. You know, because with crowdfunding, it's a game. You've got to do the minimum. Now don't be dishonest. I don't want to be dishonest, but you got to do the minimum goal you can do and still actually publish it because pay your people <laughs> is as soon as you exceed it, it kicks in the algorithm and, and, and how much you exceed it. And, you know, so it's one of those things where you, you want to set the lowest goal you absolutely can. Um, so I haven't figured that out yet, but, but point being uh, next first half of next year, first two thirds of next year, like before August of next year would be the hope. Uh, but it all depends on how well I can get, get, wow that developed, you know, and have a best foot forward scenario. And the thing is you said it could be at any time frame. So what, so, so you can't, like you're, well, that's why I focus on you, having a theme for the spiritual realm. So all, all I need to do is have a scene, a story scene, like what you find in D and D books and stuff, or these role-playing books where you see characters in an obvious situation. So all I need is a scene showing like, I mean, I'm totally making up things I might do, but like a scene showing an angel, a messenger manifesting, appearing to an old Testament prophet and showing them a vision, no, but a I'm scene showing like a, 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 somebody on the, on a world war one or world war two battlefield a medic. And then there's like this ministering spirit aiding their, their, their medical efforts, you know, like all I got to do is show, a few different yeah but you have to create get the idea for for the host you have to give him that setting so that they can kind of work with that setting and you're saying yeah. it could be any settings i'm like well how, what kind of a well <laughs> resource yeah. book and is so, that <laughs> yeah so so that's another thing that gets into other products i can produce so how do i do i'm looking at setting books right. um and i could take requests or whatever but i'll probably start with the default plan okay. without fans acting upon me yeah um you know would be probably like I, I had an idea of maybe starting with um with ancient pantheons of uh, pagan pantheons uh -huh. and um you know and if i start with the ancient ones i don't think there's any babylonians going to get upset with me so i don't have to worry about being politically correct in that yeah. regard um if i talk about the demonic powers behind the uh, babylonian pantheon you know if i get into more modern stuff i might risk you know we'll see where god leads me on that um you know but let's say I uh, do that and then I get into Roman stuff and I get in, you know, do these stuff that are more biblical times, right. but I want to do, um, you know, if I get a lot of call for no, we want like a modern, the day. more modern you get, the more diverse, <clears throat> you know? So like, it's like, I don't know that I'll be able to, the more the, I guess what we know about the world goes uh, diverges from, you know, with Christianity, like now, uh, an Asian campaign is kind of a thing. I mean, it could be an ancient thing, but like somewhere in like, um, as far as like, you know, a, a Chinese culture or Japanese culture, the more, you know, there probably wasn't a whole lot of positive um, in the ancient world as from a Christian perspective, from a biblical perspective, a whole lot positive going on there in Old Testament times. So the more modern times you get into now, it's like, well, do I make a Chinese book? And do I make a uh, Native American book? And do I make a, what do I do? You know, do I make a European revolutionary or not revolutionary war, but that's ours, American, but uh, European, you know, like French whatever, revolution. Whatever. Yeah. French, <laughs> French revolution. Or something. That's a dark principle. You know, right it just there. gets, it just gets, you know, I, I don't know. So I kind of would have to, if so I gonna... get modern with those, I'd have to, um, 
like take requests in a sense of what is if there's a you know what's what what are most people wanting yeah and so but your game handles a lot of the modern stuff more moderner or more modern than this you're you're still ain't you're still what medieval in 20 years you have a space one and so and i have the dark have ages sixth century and i dark ages, I, yeah. I chose that period because it was nice and dark and yeah and, and so i quasi you know i could do any kind of quasiness out of it uh, but I'm I'm researching and it's pretty fascinating what I've been reading. Yeah. But, and then See, the, yeah. the post-apocalyptic is um, 2200 20, AD. It's it's Earth based. You know, like I th- I feel like um, I feel like we're going to be sent. Christians are going to be persecuted and sent to gulags, and okay. and the and then the atheists are going to learn that traveling between stars. Because I'm a creation science guy. Yeah, uh, yeah. The, the the time dilation is is there so that they, it doesn't take that long. That like like we yeah. thought. Yeah, and so yeah. they they so they leave the earth and then they just they bomb the earth out of spite uh, to get rid of Israel yeah. and Jerusalem and 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 the Bible, but we survive the the, the yeah. gulags and the yeah. in our prison okay. camps the blessing in disguise type of thing. Yeah, so, that makes sense. I like it. And I then like it. and so then they rebuild their little communities and realize we got to go out now and and re Christianize the earth, you know, yeah. mission mission work and and yeah, find yeah, survivors. Yeah. It's almost like yeah okay so yeah. there's gonna be mutant bugs and all kinds of fun radioactive fun. zombies and i'm gonna do oh yeah total gamma world but you're a missionary and you're gonna go looking for yeah. survivors and yeah, it's hex world cool. based it's that's hex fun. crawl yeah sounds fun yeah yeah no for real i have yeah. i have a show on it now i haven't released it uploaded yet but i've been doing it with with some of the actors and it's been really great i really love okay. it it's kind okay. of it's kind of distracting me <laughs> that one, I'm and i'm doing christians in space this is very feels very much like star wars so it's very yeah. distracting to what I'm my Kickstarter, but uh, whatever. Yeah, my, yeah, yeah. My family keeps bugging me. <laughs> They're right there, and they keep bugging me there. Uh, but you know, yeah. So I'm excited. I'm just having a good time, and I'm assuming you are too. And you know, yeah. we're, and as yeah, Christians, exactly. I'm just seeing where it goes. As, I wouldn't be taking this big of a risk if I didn't have God saying, like the app. I wouldn't do that if God didn't give me on multiple occasions like ideas for yeah. it. Like this is what you need to do. And right. like, that was the impetus to move. And I'm like, okay, I guess I shouldn't question that, you know? Yeah. And then once that stuff happened, like D and D made their or Hasbro made the purchase and then they're announcing all these things. I'm like, it might've been providential that I'm already <laughs> pretty well deep into my own app yeah. at this point, you know, I'm just we'll hoping see. it's, I'm hoping it's God's will what I'm doing, but I'm, I'm, I'm just, just going to persevere and, and truck along and let him, yeah. let him do what he wants to do with me. So, well, what you're doing at this point, you, you know, I think you're pretty, uh, I don't know on the back end what you're, what you're in on things, you know, but I mean, it seems like it's fairly low financial risk anyway. Oh it's yeah. Time. So the good news is, um, you know, on the time side of things, since you're kind of new in and I get to be the old grumpy veteran man <laughs> now, um, cause I've been doing this for decades, the time you invest in creating your worlds, just the thought process, you're already seeing this, um, is going to be so valuable to you, whether, whether the product goes anywhere or not, it's life-changing, you know, because it's, it's, it, you're really digging in. Like I said, the dark ages, you're doing a lot of research with my uh, starter campaign. Uh, in that time, I was really researching what would the climate be? What would the culture be in Rome at that time? How would it be for Christians? And I had to think, what might the Christians be thinking? Are they skeptical about the the change? Are they, uh timid about it are they do they think great god's doing going to conquer the world now and do spirits do the, do the spirits because they're not all knowing do they have the same experience like are there some uh you know holy angels that are um skeptical about this change and that or some think hey we're going to take down the prince of rome spiritual prince of rome and we're going to convert all this is cuz jesus wasn't that long ago you know and it's like this is the beginning of us taking you know where do they think that's going to go? You know, so then that's um, what you get to explore and just thinking about that stuff, uh, putting yourself in the mindsets of other Christians throughout history um, and learning about those times really just, I find that the people I respect the most, I find that not respect, uh, what's the word? Not always are they respectable. The people that I think are the most well-rounded people are the people that have traveled the most, that have experienced the most cultures. I think they usually have well-rounded views on on the world life social things and um i don't travel that I, much well I, i'm sorry <laughs> i'm just kidding but, I had but in in in, in i don't either <laughs> no i, 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 I i've been around <laughs> but, but i was gonna say i, I have t- traveled some but uh not as much as some people that really is their hobby 
Um, but as you're digging into the dark ages, you are traveling. Yeah. As you're studying the history, you are to a degree traveling. You're putting yourself in the mindset of a different people in a different time in a different, you know, climate, uh, socially, politically, all that religiously. And you're growing as you do that. And that's what the games, our games will do yeah. is put people in a different perspective, get them out of their, you know, uh, Western style of life, you know, comforts and, and stuff. get them in the mind of somebody else. Yeah. It's it's been fun. I'm I'm I I can't go back. It's um no. I'm having no such a, I'm have I have such a great time. I'm glad I'm free from from that, and I'm doing this and um and then yeah. and being ha having a kid pray as the their nun is going to go on this journey, you know, in this adventure and pray yes. for that adventure was is just a wonderful thing to experience. Yes, and yes, um, you know, uh, the, the beginnings of this was a youth pastor. I, I, you know, I was a youth pastor, and I had like you know several groups, uh, like three, three or four groups at a time of like you know five or six players or so um, that would show up on our on our allies nights, and we do you know have multiple games going in the same room, and um, it just get it, having scenarios where you're doing all the same role playing, but you're getting to openly address and include your faith in it, in that thought process and praying before you start your game session. If you, if you, your group's cool with that, you know, or whatever, like that stuff is in irreplaceable. One of my best uh, testimonies, uh, this isn't one of the best, ones. I've got several, but uh, one of the ones that was funny since we were just talking about the youth pastor thing is, um, I had the senior pastor come up to me at one point and say, what have you been teaching my son, Michael? And I'm like, uh, what do you mean? Like, I thought I was in trouble. <laughs> you know, he's like, what have you been teaching him? in the youth group? What have you been teaching? I said, well, and so I said, well, what, what, I mean, I, what, what, what's this in reference to? So I can better figure out what you mean. And he said, well, he's been consulting or like asking his mother and I before he like does things a lot more recently. Like, what did you, how did you do that? You know, like he's actually been asking their advice or their opinion on things, you know, uh, before he just does what he does. And I was like cracked up and I said, Oh, that's, that's not what I'm preaching in the youth group. That's the role-playing game. <laughs> you know, they were in situations where he's an impulsive kind of person and he gets himself in trouble. Well, in the role-playing game, his characters did the same thing. The, 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 the leaders for that mission were discussing how they were going to proceed into this scenario. And he wanders off and does something that kind of like, like a buffoon in a movie, you know, is like, Oh, here we go. Or just, you know, like, like, like Peregrine took in the Lord of the Rings thing where he knocks the, knocks the thing down and there's or Leroy this, Jenkins you know, and, and, and Leroy Jenkins everybody thing. like comes, <laughs> he just alerts the entire like cave dwarven cave of enemies to their presence and they all come <laughs> storming in to fight them you know it's kind of like that like he would had situations like that and in, in our discussion post-mission the people kindly said to him look i understand you might not get into the tactics side uh the pre-planning tactics like we were getting into and you might be bored at that point in the game so just if you don't have to participate in that part but just ask the leadership before you go ask other people before you go off and just do your own thing. So as an you angel, know, you can just go sure off and charge and recklessly. Yeah. Cool. So, like, <laughs> he, so as he changed that behavior in the game, he started to change it in his real life. <laughs> so, I mean, that kind of stuff comes in, you know, that edification right? when you're, when you're, yeah. that's the thing yeah. about role-playing games. You t people, we learn to work together, socializing exactly. and Christians yeah. are missing out on that huge, Hugely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're missing out on yeah. sitting around together, working yeah. out some faith things or, you know, how exactly. we verbiage. And then, but also it's funny because they're constantly arguing too. You got to, we got to work that out too. Like, you know, yeah. in a fun yeah. way, but um, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what we're playing games do. They help you kind of just get out of your shell and go, do right. crazy stuff. And, but you don't walk away offended because it was not you. It was your character. Yeah. And you're, you know, and you're, you're yeah. trying so things. You can take that feedback. You can take that feedback from a, to, to a fictional character yeah. easier than you can to yourself. But what I found is as these teenagers were, uh, and young, young adults were giving feedback, critical feedback to each other. Sometimes they were given encouraging feedback as well and, and lauding things that were worth, uh, noticing and applauding, uh, which also doesn't happen enough in our life. But anyway, they were, they were applauding the good things, but they were also offering critical feedback. And as they were able to do that, they got in the practice in the game of, of speaking up and offering critical feedback and also receiving it humbly. 
and uh, receiving the criticism with the critique with the applaud right. applause. And as they did that, I started noticing that they're like, like they would literally say something like what you'd never see. Like, Hey, I think you were kind of short with your mom there. Don't you think like after that interaction and they'd be like, yeah, you're right. And then he'd like apologize. Sorry, mom, you know, like, I'm sorry he's talked that way or whatever. Like those kind of things were happening because of their interactions in the game. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's invaluable that yeah. stuff, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Just getting the kids to pray uh, in the game is a way, great way to get them. Oh, I can pray like this. Yeah in my own life too. Um, yeah, you know, it can absolutely. be a little fictional. It can be, it, yeah, yeah, it yeah. needs to be, even your own yeah. prayers are fictional in a sense. They are. Exactly. Cause you're pleading. <laughs> I, I think I see what you mean. Yeah. yeah. You know, like I really want this Lord, please help me. You know, that, Oh, I see what you're you know, saying. Like, like that's, it is fictional in that sense. You're, 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 you got to fantasize about what it is that you need out of yourself through God, uh, yeah. to, to make that prayer anyway. Um, yeah. Yeah. and, and it's not, it's not, the intent is not fictional. I know what you meant but now. Yeah, now. But, yeah. But the, but the, uh, the creative anyway, all right, so I think yeah, let's 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 end it here. I think we we we've, we've exhausted the entire realm of Christian role playing games, and the, I just want this to grow. I want the culture of Christian role playing games too. and ga- and types too. of games and discussion of it. I want to go search on YouTube and wherever else and find a ton, not just three. Yes, <laughs> a ton of us. Yes, all hip yapping with each other. And, I agree. Yeah. I know I'm not very discoverable on Google. I need to improve that. That's one of the things I'm working yeah. on. But I hope um, but I there's, hope there's more of that. I, I will say there's a rush of Christian um, reason in the last couple of years or so. Christian uh, what? Christian board games. Board games. Quality. Quality board games. Not just knockoff Pictionary or something. Right. Not like Bible Pictionary, you know, but like um, like a for real yeah. high quality thing. I hate so, board games. <laughs> we'll see. But, 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 but that's you know, good to know. We that's may good. be on the verge of, of the I RPGs. Know that there are some in development video games as well. Yeah. Uh, well, RPGs is a good way to you know? start because it's, it's accessible. And, exactly. You know, indies can do it. Us indies. So if they're doing it, we can do it. But but the reason people don't jump in on the um on the uh, RPG versus the board game is I've discovered RPGs are not easy to make. They're you got to provide a lot. You got to provide a whole world. You That's can't true. just give a backdrop and say this is the theme of the game. Here's the mechanics play. Yeah. You've got to flesh it out. And that's the well. Part. You got to make it's got to make sense. I know yeah. what you're saying. The, I know what you're saying. Like M- M- Mark Borg really helped me understand that I didn't have to go that in depth as I wanted to. I, okay. I, I pared it down so much after reading Mark Borg okay. and Mothership. Um, okay. And so where, 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 what are those? So I, I, I haven't. Yeah, I, 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 I do recommend them just so, well, I no, your game is quite different, but um, yeah. Mark Borg and Mothership are very pared down. M- okay. Mothership yeah. is uh, yeah. like alien sci-fi. Yeah. Yeah, and then Morkborg is just silly, like Warhammer 40k, Warhammer fantasy gone. Oh, stupid, okay. yeah. you know, and, and see, but yeah. fun and silly. They're they're game, yeah, they're game settings. Okay, yeah, yeah. the game settings is like Warhammer fantasy, but even more ridiculous, um, and comical. But the yeah. game, the the game, the game system was literally you got to roll a twenty to hit, and you do damage based on the sword. You know the different yeah. weapons, D yeah. D twelve, yeah. D ten, yeah. yeah. and that's yeah. kind of it. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. Like, you know, well, and there, you know, kind of yeah. funny. There's, there's definitely but, room for that for sure. But I, I really yeah. enjoyed that. It free it freed me to realize, oh, I don't have to make it D and D five e or no, you know, you or don't. anything like that. No. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, like, I took right. out levels. I don't have levels. Um, oh, you know, okay. So you just you just buy glory. You just buy your skills. And oh, I took okay. out character classes. Skills. I see. That's interesting. That's good. Yeah, I took out character classes. So you just, I mean, there's four you can start with, but there's no, but then you can just pick and go wherever you want from there. Yeah. You know? Okay. Anyway. Yeah. Cool. Anyway, I want more, yeah, more Christian RPGs. Um, because it's, I really, for, for me, for now it's, it's to help other Christians. Um, uh, that's kind of yeah. my goal at this point. Yeah. And yeah. get them an option. Like, so they, they don't yes. have to go to five. e or don't have to go to, they don't have to, to go to these things. If they, I'm not saying they, they can't like, play these things, but they don't have to. Yeah. yeah they have, they, you know. Yeah. They can invest in this for their kids or for their brothers or sisters who you know who what? Need this. Yeah, yeah, that's that's who I see this appealing to a lot are um, people that are Christian or or open to it that want to play. I'd say probably Christian that want to play these games, these kind of games with family, children, introduce white, them to RPGs, you know, people that aren't necessarily RPG players, right? And whether they are okay with 
uh, you know, the other themes and stuff in other RPGs or not, theologically, whether they're okay with that or not, their wife may question it or their children, you know, they don't want to necessarily present this certain aspects of things to their children. Yeah. You know, they don't want their, you know, children encountering certain things or whatever. And this is a way that's just a nice safe and, and it mixes their faith in it. I think they'll, they won't realize the value, like, like what you're just realizing because you're doing it. Most people probably won't realize the the actual joy of of mixing your faith in yeah. until they do it. Yeah, I, I think of it like I say it, it's going to be a lot of people. Christian RPG uh, setting is going to be people's favorite ice cream flavor they've never tasted. <laughs> they don't know it's their favorite ice cream flavor yet because they haven't t- tried it. But once they do, they're going to love it. Yeah, every Christian actor that I've gotten to play this, they had no idea what this was or what you know. They, they don't know what I'm talking about. But, you know, they. Yes. They kind of vaguely know D and D and all that, yeah. Um, but then as soon as they play, they're like, "Oh wow, this is totally. I get it. This is like nor. I don't. Exactly. This is fun. Yeah. I don't. What? Yes. Wow. You know, like they're just totally like this is this is nothing. It's it's fun. It's yeah. good. You know, we pray and you know. And I'm like, oh my yeah. gosh, I gotta keep, I gotta keep going. I gotta keep going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yours is great for that. Yours is especially great for that. You know. Yeah. Yours, yeah, yours is gonna to, to me. It sounds like yours is gonna be like. Okay, we've been playing this for the Lord RPG for a while. Well, let's get serious now. Yeah, or <laughs> What's like, out you there? know, somebody's like, I wonder if there's something that's hardcore. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 All yeah. right. Yeah. But we need it all. You yeah. Know? yeah. So yeah. Uh, if anyone has gone this far in this 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 video, no. please uh let uh you know contact us. Let's let's build a community of Christian RPG people. Uh yeah. that's, that's what Absolutely. this is about. And uh, Absolutely. have more discussions and, and keep yeah. going have fun all right all right god bless that was, that was wonderful to talk to you anthony and thank you it was great meeting you yeah. yeah um let me stop recording now because i got okay. a silly question all right all right yeah uh where's my window